Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing a watch that passed across my desk. I didn't have one for sale at the time, but I had the watch in hand, and I want to create a reference for the model. Call me, email me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com to see if I have this model in stock when you're watching the video, whatever time that might be. For now, let me explain. 39.5 millimeters in stainless steel, this is the Grunefeld 1941 Remontoir, a model launched in 2016 that won that year's GPHG Men's Watch Prize. The timepiece represented a 8-second Remontoir constant force device in a newly downsized Grunefeld case designed for broader appeal. The model you see here was a 2017 update of the Remontoir line, adding dials by Kerry Voudelainen and a new stainless steel case option. Now, this watch has been sold out since at least late 2019 when I first heard that no new examples would be sold. So 188 movements, many different metals, 25 made of stainless steel as you see right here. So you're looking at a rarity within a rare class to begin with. The watch is 39.5 millimeters in steel, 10.6 millimeters thick, 47.2 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now the timepiece on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. Whereas far easier than some of the earlier Grunefeld watches, such as the Parallax Tourbillon, the 1 Hertz, the GTM6, this watch is a lot more wearable, and that was the idea behind the 1941 case. Tim and Bart Grunefeld have told me that they prefer the larger case. This case was designed for collectors with more conservative tastes and more contemporary tastes. On the wrist, it wears easily, to the point that I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, and with that sloped concave bezel profile, and again, it's only 10.6 millimeters thick. It will slide underneath a dress cuff. Plenty of clearance on both sides of my wrist. The strap is a wonderful nubuck-like suede leather texture. As you can see, dark blue with a contrasting light blue cyan stitch. There is a sheer cut side showing the layers of leather on the underside. You can see this is a Grunefeld factory strap in brand new condition. They are signal orange on the underside. We have a steel pin buckle that matches the profile of the lug, so you can see design parallelism there. And then if you look inside the buckle, you can see an FT logo right there. That's the signature of FT, or a Swiss case maker that is a Richemont company that makes this buckle and likely also made the case for the Grunefelds. Now you can see that the 1941 case is more than just a smaller case size. This has wonderful dips and swells to it, curves and creases. You can see there's a little bit of a raised plinth at 12 o'clock and at 6 o'clock that raises the bezel in between the lug horns. The lugs are fluted, and then you can see outboard, they're dramatically concave and broken from the case band, which has a lovely compound curvature to it, a little bit of a bowl shape. The crown is conical with a deep and sharp knurling, and then you can see the Grunefeld logo rolling over. By the way, I should mention, Grunefeld mentions in their literature that this particular steel has been set at a molecular level to shine more brightly and appear more white, more like palladium or platinum. And while I cannot verify that, as I don't have a control sample of steel available, it does look awfully bright, almost the way you would find polished platinum. Now the dial is by Kerry Voudelin and Complemin Quetrin. It is his dial company, and it's made the way his dials are made. There's several different finishes here, and you can see that we have a wonderful sort of matte finish to the indices in the hands. Normally these features are of high polish, but on this dial you can see that the alpha style hands and the trapezoidal indices, they are all matte finished, though the indices are also faceted to give greater contrast. The only real high polish on this dial you'll find on the, it's basically a flywheel weight for the remontoire, which sits on the reverse of the movement on the side, and then you can see the cannon pinion itself has been polished. The dial is made of sterling silver, so solid discs of sterling silver, AG925, cut on rose lathes to create this pattern that you see here. So we have a uh, sort of ecaille de poisson or fish scale outboard, pyramide or a pyramid hobnail within the small seconds, and then we have a grand doge or a barley corn pattern at center. So we have three different patterns. The dial is galvanized blue over the sterling silver base and the rose lathe, the traditional guilloche means it cuts these patterns into the dial. Now turning all this over, you can see the 
business end of the movement is impressive. You almost wish you could wear it upside down. The movement itself is 32 millimeters in diameter, so it's properly sized to fit this case, and it fills this case back well. It is called the G05. It is the fifth movement from the Grunefeld brothers. It has 35 hours of power reserve, and then a stop works. The stop works will stop the watch when it no longer has sufficient energy to run the remontoir mechanism. So at a point where it will no longer keep time well, it will simply stop rather than keep time poorly and delude the owner. You can see the watch has a hacking seconds function, so you can stop the seconds hand. There are a couple of different ways to do a remontoir de galette. You can see that this one, every eight seconds, charges up a spring that acts as a buffer between the main spring barrel and the escapement. So every eight seconds, a separate locking pallet will unlock the transmission of energy. This means that for 35 hours, as long as the remontoir is running, the balance will maintain constant amplitude, which allows this 36 joule movement to be adjusted very, very precisely. The idea is that constant amplitude takes away one of the great variables in adjustment of a watch, which is trying to find the average of all its amplitudes during its power reserve. Well, there is no variation. With constant force, you get constant amplitude, and thus you can adjust the watch to be extremely precise. It is a free-sprung balance for precise regulation and durability against shock. It features a Phillips overcoil to the hairspring, so in any physical position with respect to gravity, the watch will neither speed up nor slow down, keeping a very even amount of time. As I mentioned, different ways to do a remontoir. F.P. Journe uses a remontoir that charges up once every second, acting as the buffer between the barrel and the escapement, whereas Alang und Zerne use a double third wheel with a hairspring that charges up once every minute. So different takes. This watch, of course, does allow you to enjoy that for which you've paid, even if you don't quite penetrate the tech specs. Take a look. The bridges here feature bell gable profiles. They're designed to look like the roofs of old Dutch homes. And of course, the Grunefeld brothers out of Oldenzaal in the Netherlands make their watches in Holland. You can also see that the bridges are made of steel, exceptionally difficult to finish. Steel is rarely used on bridges and plates, particularly because it is such a bear to work and even worse to finish in haute horloge form. Well, we have that here. As you can see, each individual bridge features a media blasted or frosted interior. Then there is a satin finished channel that runs around the edge. And then on the very edge, you could see mirrored on glage. So each bridge is triple finished. Everything that turns black as I tilt the watch through the light is poly noir or specular finish. Black polish finished up with diamond paste in the final step is one of the most difficult feats to achieve in the art of movement finishing. You can also see that we have sharp interior angles where two bevels meet, as the Grunefelds have not looked askance to that other challenge of high horology finishing, uh, taking two bevels with a sharp cleft between them where they converge. All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and chamfered circumference. Flip this upside down so you can see it more easily. So the screws are the proverbial 100 Swiss franc screws based on the work invested. There's engine turning on the base plate. You can see satination on the wheels, including a lovely solarization on the ratchet wheel atop the barrel. You can see there's a wonderful swan's neck style click spring with a black polished click and nod to the pocket watch era. Another nod to the pocket watch era. You can see that there are little gold chiton that hold many of the pivot jewels, and that's a nod to the pocket watch era when the jewel would be set in a precision gold chiton, which would then be pressed in turn into the bridges, a primitive manufacturing method used to make up for the lack of precision in pressing jewels directly into bridges. That was the case in the 19th century. It's not the case now, so the chitons serve only to make the movement more beautiful, beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and of course all of this water resistant to 30 meters. It is beautiful inside and out, 25 in stainless steel, 188 made of all materials, and then you break them down by the dial options ordered. These are exceptionally individual and scarce watches. Again, I don't know when you're watching this video, but reach out to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com to check on Watchbox's current Grunefeld inventory.